goodness sound is that is that better hi zara hi aisha is that is that better everyone yes okay cool um hello everyone thank you for letting me know about the the lack of sound um and i hope you're having a nice week that's what i was saying before um ah uh, thank you zara um yes we're just gonna wait for like hello fatima um 60 seconds for other people to show up and then we can get started um hmm i wonder if i should open the actual presentation i'll just stare at you guys even though i can't see you um thank you vanessa oh so many compliments today um i don't know what lyn means because possibly i am old now and certain acronyms have not reached me um, am i lynn is that like a, or am i lying i don't know anyway uh manahill i don't know what you're talking about i think lynn's a name interesting right anyway confusion um from manahill but I'm gonna carry on and actually start the presentation. Uh, so I will be sharing it with you now. Okay. Oh, apparently I'm, that button was not right. You can't see me pressing the wrong buttons, but I am, that is what I'm doing. Okay, cool. So you guys should be able to see the presentation now, which I believe you can. Awesome. Yes, I'm Georgia. <laughs> ah, yes, Fatima, that is a good idea. I have tea. You, I mean, like, I'm about to start. So, like, tea getting should have happened maybe like two minutes ago. But yes, um, tea is a good revision tool. Uh, Zara says, Is there any revision guides you recommend for students aiming for top grades? Am I going to recommend anything else but Snap Provides? Because, I mean, like, I help make those and I think they're really good. Um, oh, hello, Georgia Brown. Yes, I'm Georgia too. How long is this? It aims to be about an hour. Usually with the questions at the end, it ends up being sort of more like an hour and 15. Um, but yes, so let's get started. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what this, this thing is. Um, so, oh, right, I'm gonna talk about me first. So my name is Georgia, as you might have noticed. Um, uh, I'm the head of chemistry here at SnapRevise. Uh, I have a master's in chemistry. So I did like this integrated degree where you do like a BSc and a master's all together. And I mainly did chemistry, but I did some neuroscience and other bits and bobs because I like learning about everything essentially. And I've been teaching and tutoring for like six years now. So hopefully that means that I can get things across in a really understandable way. But if at any point you don't know what I'm saying, please tell me because then I can learn to teach you better and you can learn things in a better way. So these web classes are essentially a recap and they are key points. So I'm not going into like crazy, crazy detail. Um, I tend to skip the bits that you can memorize rather than need to understand. So I will tell you when I've skipped something, uh, I'll tell you at the very beginning, um so you should know that and we also go through exam questions and a note that i if you've never been here before to one of these web classes hello james um they are free for now uh but they're gonna soon be part of our ultimate package on october 16th some of them will still be free because we do understand that like students are skint not everybody has the money to do it so we still want to be giving you guys something but also like they do cost money to produce so we do have to put them as part of our paid for package um that i'm really excited about the release of so more about that later at the end um things to keep you here some lovely people who are here have already won one of these so like at the end we'll be telling you guys who has won a free account which you get to enter for if you post about us on your insta story uh, and you have to tag us in it and you need to share a picture of the web class so do that and you might get um a package for free 
uh georgia other georgia um we don't know yet essentially that's going to be re that information will be released soon but i don't have an estimate i'm afraid um and then at the end we also have a coupon code for you that will make things a bit cheaper okay so you don't have instagram you should <laughs> get instagram just for the purposes of entering online competitions and for like I don't know what other people follow on Insta, but I follow really pretty artists and it makes me happy when the news is rubbish. So do that. Um, okay, objectives. Oh, you've got a chemistry test. Well, this is perfect then because I'm gonna teach you the things that you need to know. Um, so yeah, this is really good timing people. So our objectives are to perform calculations with moles and molar mass. So that should be super helpful for your tests. Um, the second objective is to be able to work out molecular and empirical formulas using moles and things like that. And also we want to, you did cover balancing equations at GCSE, but we're going to recap that because it comes up a lot in A-level and we're going to sort of extend our knowledge of it. Um, Shannon, the lessons for year 12 currently are once a week on a Tuesday at 6.30. Um, possibly they're going to be coming up more often when our, we release our SNAP Revised 2.0. Um, Yes, but the year 13 ones are on Thursday, uh, once a week, same time. So I'm not going to be covering ionic charge prediction, which some people shove in with this topic as well. And I'm not going to be talking about specifically how to balance ionic equations. The things you will learn about balancing equations will be useful for that, but I'm not gonna specifically look at like electron balancing and charge. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, is that fluffy Pikachus? Is that multiple Pikachus? multiple Pikachus, fluffy Pikachus. I'm sorry that you have a test and I hopefully will be able to help you with that. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna run through the spec points. So we cover AQA, OCR, Edexcel. I'm not gonna read through them cause that's long, just like have a glance um, about uh, what kind of spec points we're covering. As I say, every time, please, please, please keep an eye on these just for your own learning. Um, you, you need to be able to like use it as like a tick thing, to-do list or some something like that, because you kind of have to be taking responsibility for your own education at this point. Um, your teachers can't do it for you now. So yes, keep an eye on your spec points. Here are the OCR ones. Having a look, I'm gonna give you maybe like 20 seconds and sip my tea. And then here are the Edexcel ones, which seem to be a lot shorter, much more concise. Um, okay, we can get started. So we're going to talk about what we already know. Zena, I'm sorry, you also have a test. Everybody seems to have a test. Apologies. Oh, no, I can't get my pen out. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Camera is fine. Cool. So help me out, guys. This is our recap from things that you should already know that we need to know for this web class. Someone tell me the like nice and proper definition of relative atomic mass. So like this would be like a two mark question in an exam. And there are sort of like two key things that you like absolutely have to say. Anybody want to like chuck something in the comments? And by anybody, I mean everybody. Okay, so we're getting a couple of things. Nadin says number of protons. Not quite, that's the atomic number. We've got AFT saying weighted mean mass. That's That would be one mark, uh, kind of. You have to say mass of what? Um, Roa Alk Arudi is saying mass of element relative to 1 12th of carbon 12. That is also one mark. Do we have someone that's got both? We do. Isaac is saying relative atomic mass is the weighted mean mass of an element atom when compared to the mass of carbon-12, which is perfect because the two things that you need to say is that it is a weighted average or weighted mean and that you need to say that it is relative to carbon-12 or relative to 1 12th of carbon-12, but either is fine. So relative atomic mass is the mass relative to carbon 12 and that it is a weighted average of isotopic masses. And also if my handwriting is illegible, please tell me. And oh, look, somebody's jumping ahead to the last one. Um, I'll come back to you, Ward. 
I like Wade Ward. I'm going to go with Ward, but tell me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, please. Um, oh my God, you actually said my name right. Most people can't. I think it's really important to say people's name right, but like obviously I'm not right in front of you. So, like, I never know if it's actually right unless you comment. Ward, yay, I got it right. Okay, cool. Um, Nadin is confused. Why is Nadin confused? Can I explain what? Can I explain relative atomic mass? Is that what you're asking? Yes, okay. So when it's sort of like the stuff we already know section, I can't go into too much detail because, so relative atomic mass was covered in detail in not last week's year 12 web class, but the weeks before. So if I have to like go over topic slots, it just sort of kills the time um, for this specific topic but really really quickly um all masses so on your periodic table when you've got your masses um they're all compared to carbon 12 right because we're not weighing one atom we can't really weigh one atom or we can now but back then we couldn't so everything's compared to carbon 12 and because you have multiple isotopes so you have the same thing for example carbon that has um some carbons have uh like six neutrons some have seven some have eight which means that they have different masses so we do an average of all of those so that's the weighted bit weighted bit average of your isotopic masses and it's all relative to carbon 12 but i can't really talk more about that because um we do need to do moles and things but go ahead and watch the other one um to get more about relative atomic mass so molecular mass does somebody want to tell me what molecular mass is how is it different from relative atomic mass you're welcome. Anyone for molecular mass? Mass of a molecule? Yeah, try to go into a bit more detail, AFT. What are we, so it's the mean mass kind of. So like if we wanna talk about it, like how would you work out molecular mass? Oh, whew. yes, Faye. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going for is it's that this is the sum of the atomic masses um, in of all the atoms in a molecule. So that's our perfect definition. So it is the sum of the masses of all atoms in a molecule. Wicked. Okay. So last one, somebody already told me what an iron is, but guys have a go anyway. Um, yes, Emma, if we wanted to go into more details, we would talk about it being in comparison to carbon 12, but usually we're just talking about it like within the realm of the um, molecule. Charged particle, yeah. So particle is a better thing to say than atom because uh, it can include molecules. So charged molecules are still ions. So I'm gonna put, an ion is a charged atom or molecule, and then in brackets, particle, because that includes both. Wicked. Yeah, it has, that's also right, a bead. Um, it's gained or lost an electron um, from its neutral state. So yes, <laughs> wicked. All right, so we can move on to the stuff that we don't already know, um, which is moles. So moles is a lot of sort of like calculations and defining. So the main thing we need to start with is Avogadro's number. So a mole is basically like an amount of substance where you've got Avogadro's number of particles. So what we want to do, and we've already got James and Fluffy Pikachus um, and AFT telling me what Avogadro's number and Georgia, so many people already know what it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and write it in because you guys already know what it is. So Avogadro's number, and I'm gonna write the long version of it. Ooh, and I've written it wrong. <laughs> Sorry, 6.022214179. And no, I did not remember that. It's written next to me, um, times 10 to the 23. So that's six with like 23 zeros. So it's a massive number and we represent it with N subscript A. Um, so yes, so a mole has that many particles in it. It could be atoms, it could be molecules, it could be any of those, um, but it's got that many in it. And uh, Avogadro's number unit 
is moles to the power of minus one, or you could also write that as one over mole. Do we have to know that off by heart? You should try to remember 6.022 times 10 to the 23. I believe it's different for different exam boards. So double check with your exam board whether you need to remember Avogadro's number, but I'm pretty sure that some of them do, so double check. Um, okay, so one mole of carbon 12 has a mass of what? So we've been talking about how relative atomic mass is related to carbon 12. So this is where we learn why. Yeah, Logan, Pikachu's, Abney, once upon a time. James, you're all right. So it's 12, 12 grams. So when we're looking at the periodic table, every single relative atomic mass on there is the relative atomic mass of a mole of substance, not of a single atom, of course, because a single atom is not going to be 12 grams. That would be insane. Um, so if we sort of string those together and we say that one mole of carbon-12 contains some amount of atoms. How many atoms does one mole of carbon-12 contain? Yeah, cricket rays, got it. Yeah, so does AFT. Yeah, we're all right. So it's 6.022 and I cannot be bothered to write the rest, so I'm not going to, times 10 to the 23. Um, atoms. That is perfectly right. So what I want you guys to do right now is I'm going to get you to open up a website or if you have your textbook in front of you, you need a periodic table. Um, basically every time you come to these web classes, I want you to open a periodic table. I could have one in here, but it would mean flipping back between slides all the time, which is annoying. So if you could open one yourself and there is a website called ptable. So like literally just like ptable.com um, or is it .co.uk? Let me check. I believe it's .com. Yes, it is. Cool. So opening up your periodic table, we've just sort of acknowledged that all of the masses on the periodic table tell us, um, ah, thank you, snap revise. Um, tell us how many, uh, how much a mole weighs. So looking at your periodic table, can someone tell me how much one mole of oxygen weighs or what's the mass of? 16, yeah, thanks AFT, thank you Abney. So it's 16 grams. And Abney, it's a really good idea for you to get in the habit of making sure you add your units on the end, even if it's just in a comment on a YouTube video. So make sure you put grams, same for you Hanine. Um, okay, iron, one mole of iron. Yeah, perfect, Abney. Yes, lovely. Thank you, Georgia. It feels really weird saying thank you, Georgia. It feels like I'm talking to myself, but um, not too weird. Ladna, yes. Ah, oh, look at all the smelly emojis. Yes, well done, Warden, Axel, and Zena. Yeah, cool. Um, what about two moles of helium? How are we going to work that out? So instead of one mole, it's two moles. How? What's the difference? Yeah. It's going to be eight. So one mole would be four. So two moles is going to be eight grams. Wicked. Okay. Three moles of hydrogen. Yeah. Three grams because hydrogen is one gram. Perfect. And last of all, five moles of lithium. Yeah, it's frozen. If it freezes, try refreshing the page. Sometimes that, that helps. But yes, we've all got, so some of us are doing it to one decimal place, some of us are rounding up, but it's fine. All is fine, so let's do 35 grams. In your exam, what you wanna be doing is sort of keeping the same amount of decimal places as it asks in the question or is it in the periodic table in your data sheet. Yes, thank you, you're all great. All right, so that's our introduction to moles. That's reasonably simple. You'll handle that quite well. So the next thing we're going to look at is molar mass. The molar mass and molecular mass are very similar, um, but molar mass is the molecular mass specifically for one mole of substance, whereas molecular mass could be sort of, they're basically the same. 
they're essentially exactly the same. And I'm already getting, um, yay, it's working again. I'm basically getting answers already, but I'm gonna sort of go the slow way and make sure you guys know what you're doing. So well done for everybody that said 18. And it's also good for you guys to see how this is written. So if we, when you see a big M, that means molar mass. So every time I'm talking about molar mass, I'm gonna be doing big M and then in brackets, the element that it is. Um, when I'm doing moles, it's gonna be a little m. And this is the same standard way you write everything um, for all chemists. And when I'm gonna do mass, it's gonna be little m. So molar mass, big M, normal mass, little m. Um, does anyone, can anyone tell me the units? Oh, huh, just as I say units, fluffy Pikachu adds, adds them in. Yes, molar mass is units, is not grams. Um, molar mass has a different unit and Fluffy Pikachu's has correctly said that it is grams per mole. So again, you can either write that with a um, slash, what is that thing called? I'm calling it a slash. Um, or you can write moles to the power of minus one. Cool. So is molar mass MR? So MR is often used for molecular mass. So molar mass, you want to use a big M. Can it be kilograms? No, no, it cannot. Um, and now I don't think there is anything with, I mean like really big things, but that's not usually that useful. Somebody might put it in kilograms if it's like a protein and it's massive, but you should, the standard units are grams. So the molar mass of hydrogen is one, of oxygen is 16. And that means that the molar mass of water is going to be, and you guys have really given me the answer, so I'm just writing the working for anybody that wasn't keeping up, is two times one plus the 16, because we've got two hydrogens, one oxygen, and you lovely people have already told me that it's grams per mole. Cool, so we're gonna work backwards now. So if anybody is unfamiliar with these triangle things, the sort of the mass, molar mass, moles thing, the way it works is that you cover up the thing that you're looking for. So for this question, we're looking for number of moles. So we ignore this, this bit, and we just do mass and then it's over um, molar mass. And we're already getting correct answers. So you guys are fabulous. But so for this, it's gonna be the mass divided by the molar mass, right? And we've been given the mass, which is 146. And we want the, molar mass. So we know that hydrogen has a molar mass of one and I'm going to just tell you that chlorine has a molar mass of 35.5. So the total HTL molar mass has got to be 36.5 and because people have already told me, um, I'm just going to write it in, which is four, and you have rightly said that the units for moles is just moles, obviously. Wicked. All right, molar mass and molecular mass are different. They are technically different, but they are worked out in a very similar way. So like for the purposes of A-level, unless you're thinking about units, they're quite similar. Um, that's what I meant by they aren't, that, they aren't really different. They are different, but for the purposes of calculations, they're not really that different. <laughs> okay. Wicked, we can move on then. You guys are super speedy. So you didn't use the equation for the top one. Do you mean, do you mean I didn't use sort of this, the sort of triangle thing for the top thing? So molar mass times moles. So I didn't, I didn't use that because the definition of molar mass is for one mole of substance, right? So because it's for one mole of substance, this, the moles value is always going to be one and one times anything is just itself. So it didn't really seem worth it to use our lovely triangle for molar mass because we're literally just sort of adding, adding them up. Cool. So moles and equations. So we've sort of been talking about molar mass in terms of sort of just if you have one mole apart from in the first slide but what we want to be able to do is think about our equations um and the important thing in equations is to make sure you look at the, the big number in front um the big numbering in front yes <laughs> for everybody that's recognizing that that is respiration yes 
yes, it is. Um, it is the respiration equation. Uh, so if you're doing biology, this is, you know, partly useful as well. Um, so the number in front tells us the number of moles of substance. We don't mean that in every respiration cycle, you only have six moles. We mean like comparative, right? So comparatively, you have six moles of oxygen to one mole of glucose, which is what C6H12O6 is. I don't have paper, run, <laughs> run and go and get paper. You should have, you should definitely have paper. Um, you could print out the slides and write in them, but you might not have time. Do I do physics? We don't have physics web classes at the moment. Uh, we will do, but it's not happening yet. Um, yay, I'm glad it's helpful. I assume you meant helpful and not helloful. Um, Cause I don't think helloful is a word, Anita, but helpful is, oh my God, somebody's already done it. <laughs> I need to stop chatting. Somebody's, oh, but we're not quite, we're not quite there. Okay, so what we're doing is calculating the mass of the products. So the products in the equation are always the ones on the right-hand side because that's what we're making, right? So we're going to start out doing it the normal way. We're going to work out the molar masses of uh, water and of CO2. So yes, cricket rate, it is the opposite of photosynthesis. So I'm going to go ahead and be your periodic table for you and write down all of the... Um, molar masses of all of these, but I want you guys to write in what the molar mass of water is and what the molar mass of carbon dioxide is, ignoring the number in front for now. So you're going to have to tell me which one you're talking about. So we want the molar mass of water and the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Yeah, so Fatima, hello Fatima, did you get your tea? I hope you have some tea now. Um, yes, H2O is 18. Yes, yay, tea. CO2 is um, 44. Wicked. So, so we're getting some different answers um, for what we have all together. So if we remember what I sort of said at the beginning of this slide, the number in front, is the number of moles. So in this equation, in this reaction, so in respiration, you have six moles of water and six moles of carbon dioxide. Where do you find the PowerPoint? Scroll up to the top of the um, comments, uh, Ward, and have a look there. So what we wanna do is we wanna do six times 18 grams for H2O, and we wanna do six times 44 for CO2. So we've got some totals all together. And I think that is right, but I'm going to use my calculator to make sure because I never trust my calculations. So can someone tell me what the total for water is? So what is six moles of water? Isn't that molecular and not mass? Um, is what molecular mass? So this is both molecular mass and molar mass currently, both these values. And this is gonna be just mass. Yeah, so we've got lots of people saying 108 and that is for our water. And we've got six times 44. So does somebody wanna tell me the carbon dioxide one? Yeah, thank you, Hanin. So we've got like a good sort of altogether answer. So 264 grams for carbon dioxide and then all together we've got um, 372 grams. So that is our total mass of products. Wicked, you guys are doing so well so far. Um, and I think the answer to this question is gonna be good, but you know, just we'll check. So how are we feeling? Give me some emoji feedback. And if you don't get it, tell me what it is that you don't get or I will not be able to help you. So we've got some ones. I know it has like a number system, but I really prefer emojis. It's just more fun. Yay. Thank you. And cricket ray, uh, did you say zero last time? Because I feel like people just, just trying to confuse me. Ooh, trouser press guy has a sort of head tilt emoji. I didn't know you could do that kind of. Cool. So we all seem happy. Everything's feeling simple so far. Wicked, that means we can do an exam question. Cool, thank you for all the emojis. Am I doing reacting masses too? I believe I can't, 
no, I think Reacting Masses is the next uh, web class. For this web class, it's going to be molecular and empirical formula. And then the last bit is going to be, sorry, I'm waiting for, I'm going to skip ahead in this presentation. So it's going to be molecular formula, and then it's going to be balancing equations. So this is all sort of like the most basic email stuff, not reacting masses. That is next week. Cool. But we are going to do this exam question. Do you do organic? Yes, yes. But that is usually taught like right at the end um, of the year. So like a little bit further in. Chemistry is doing your head in. I'm so sorry, M. Um, what an interesting name you have. Um, 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 I apologize for on behalf of chemistry in general. Um, so will we cover Avogadro's constant calculations? You shall see any, any second now. Um, so what we have is we have solid sulfur existing in a lattice of S8, right? Uh, each S8 molecule is a ring of eight atoms. And we know that because it says eight right here. How many atoms of sulfur are there in 0 0.0120 moles of S8 molecules? So this kind of answers your question, Cricket Ray, because we're going to need Avogadro's constant in there. So somebody lovely remind me, what is Avogadro's number? And Logan, you are right. You've done it very quickly. Well done. You've got Adam saying uh, 6.02. You've forgotten maybe like 23 zeros at, at the end there. Yes, fluffy Pikachu's. So Avogadro's number and A is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Thank you, Roa. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you. Other Georgia, it's honestly, I'm not going to get used to calling somebody else Georgia. It feels really weird. Um, okay, so we know that, that there are that many in how many moles? How many moles does Avogadro's number represent? One. Yay, one. Cool. One mole. So if one mole is this, what do we need to do with this number? What do we need to do with Avogadro's number and this number of moles? So we don't want one mole, we want 0 0.012 moles. Yeah, you multiply them. So we're just gonna do 6.022 times 10 to the 23 times 0 0.012. Um, and that will give us what? Someone shove that in their calculator for me. I'm sorry that you don't like your school teacher, um, but you know, I am like right here and on your screen. So it's cool. You, you got me. Um, yeah, cool. Lots of people saying 7.2264 times 10 to 21. Right. But that's not our answer. Tell me why it's not our answer. Fluffy Pikachu's is saying, yes, because there are eight. Yeah, there are eight. What do we need to do? We have to multiply by eight. Oh my God, it's like I say things and then I, the comments pop up exactly the same time. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you, Nadin. Thank you, Melanie. Um, yes, so we need to times by eight. So we're gonna times that by eight and someone shove that in their calculator for me so that I don't have to. Am I doing a live session tomorrow? No, I'm doing one on Thursday though, but that's for year 13. Yeah, thank you, Aisha. So we've got 5.78 times 10 to the 22 atoms. And I would put that in the answers. Wicked. All right, so recap, just in case somebody wasn't following. We've got Avogadro's number of atoms. We don't want one mole and Avogadro's number is one mole of atoms. We want 0 0.012 moles. So we times Avogadro's number by that, but we've got S8. So we've got eight sulfur atoms, not one sulfur atom. So we times by eight and we get this. The next year 12 live session is next Tuesday. And that is calculating reacting masses, I believe. 
Oh, okay. I will see you not tomorrow, uh, Thursday, Aisha. Tomorrow's biology year 13, which still may be useful for you. Okay, so next question. A student heats. Oh, quickly before, I haven't defined anhydrous yet. Uh, I do later, which is bad timing because this question needs it. Can someone tell me what anhydrous means? What's the formula we need to know when we're linking um, Avogadro's constant and moles? So if you want to know how many, so it's sort of, whoops, let me, how long does each session last usually? About an hour, hour and 15, something. Yeah, no water. Thank you everybody that is saying no water for anhydrous. So I'm gonna really quickly go back and write down that we have Avogadro's number times the number of moles is equal to the number of particles. That's the formula you need to know. Yeah, or the way Sophie has written it, that's just it rearranged. How long is your session usually? It is, <laughs> has somebody, wait, I'm so, my God, everybody's going so fast. All right, really, really quick. I need to move on and stop, stop rambling. So the anhydrous, so the, the without water aluminum sulfate has formed a mass of 6.846 grams. Use the student's results to calculate a value of X. So the X here, that is our moles, right? Because the number and the big number in front is al always our number of moles and that is not an S, it's a weird five, cool. So we need to figure out X, so the number of moles of water, use the student's results, and we know that the molar mass of um, aluminium sulfate, I believe we could call it, oh yes, we can call it that, is um, 342.3 grams per mole. Wicked. All right. So what's the first thing we need to do? So we have we have the mass here. I'm going to give you guys this little triangle thing. So if we remember the little m is mass, big M is molar mass, little n is number of moles. Yeah. So if we have, we have this mass here, right? So we have mass, which means that it's this m here. And what are we looking for? Yeah, we're looking to calculate moles. Well done. Um, could one of my lovely colleagues please give the topic name for year 13 bio tomorrow? Because I don't know what it is. Um, cool. So we've got 6.846 grams of aluminium sulfate, and we want to know how many moles it is. So we're going to divide by its molar mass, because if we cover up n, which is the number of moles, we've got mass divided by molar mass. So it's 6.846 divided by 342.3, which is 0.02. So we've got 0.02 moles of aluminium sulfate. So that's where we are so far. Okay, so what do we need to do next? Anybody got any ideas? What's our next step? So we know how many moles of aluminium sulfate. We, we want to know how many moles of water there are in the end. So we want, yeah, so we're trying to figure out, we don't quite want, um, yeah, so we want the mass of water. So we've got, lovely. So yes, we do want the mass of water. So if we know how much the anhydrous aluminium sulfate is, how are we going to work out how much water there is from the sort of total crystal mass. Does anybody said? Original, oh yes, I should have said original minus new mass equals the mass of the water. Yes, so yes, and Hanin, you're totally right. Yeah, what, we're going to subtract. So we've got this mass here, which is the total mass. So that's including, whoopsie. So that's including the water. So that's 12.606. And we want to take away the dry mass, so the, the anhydrous mass. So that's 6.846, and that gives us 5.76. The dot means, yes, pretty much. The dot uh, after water usually means that it's um, uh, a hydrated crystal. That's usually when you use a dot. Cool, so we know that we have 5.76 grams, that is water. So we're going to need, oops. So right now we have a mass and we're looking for moles, right? 
So we're, because we're looking for moles, we're going to, again, we're going to do mass divided by molar mass. So we've got the mass of 5.76. And can someone tell me what the molar mass of water is? It's not 16. Oh, or are you saying, Sandra, are you saying that's the final answer? Thank you, Anita and Aisha. Um, cool, yeah, it's 18. Ah, I've got to stop pressing the screen. Okay. Uh, divided by 18. You're totally right, which is 0 0.32 moles of water. Okay, so now what we need to do is sort of think of it as a ratio. So we've got 0 0.02 moles of our aluminium sulfate. Oops. And um, we've got 0 0.32 moles of our water. So we want to know, so what do we need to do with this to get, to get the sort of like the, uh, a whole number? Where did the 18 come from? The 18 is the uh, molar mass of water. So the mass, the molar mass of oxygen is 16 and of hydrogen is one. So um, H2O, two hydrogens, one, two plus 16 is 18 divide by the smallest number. Yes, beautiful, uh, we can divide by the smallest number. And if we do that, we get a ratio of aluminum sulfate to water of one to 16, which means that for every one mole of aluminum sulfate, we have 16 moles of water, which means that X is 16. Well done for everybody that got that right. And yes, this is very similar to um, empirical formula calculations. And um, yeah, I'm glad it makes sense once upon a time. That is, that makes me happy. Okay, so we have gotten to the end of that exam question, which means that unless anyone is totally lost, uh, we're gonna move on. So you need to tell me if you're totally lost. Got about five seconds. Okay, so nobody's lost, so we're gonna move on. We're gonna be looking at molecular and empirical formulas, uh, sort of like what's the difference between them and sort of practicing, figuring, figuring them out from experimental data. So molecular formula says how many atoms um, there are of each element in a molecule, so the actual number, whereas the empirical formula is the ratio. So if we, why did I divide at the end? Why did I divide at the end? So at the end, essentially you just want them to be whole numbers. So you can do anything with this ratio to make it whole numbers. I, I personally try to like find the nearest number that they both will um, times into a whole number by, or you can divide 0 0.32 by 0 0.02, however you wanna do it, but you need to get them to be whole numbers so that you can write them in moles. Um, cool, good, good. Um, so the molecular formula, and somebody already said what this thing is called, butanoic acid, and that is butanoic acid. You don't need to know that until the end of the year, possibly, but well done. Um, so with molecular formula, we're literally just going to write how many carbons there are, how many hydrogens there are, and how many oxygens there are. So somebody help me out. What is the molecular formula for butanoic acid for this thing? Yeah, we got a C4. Yes, thank you. So C4, H8, O2. Yeah, perfect. Um, your number of hydrogens is a bit dodgy AFT, but I assume that was just like not counting particularly um, accurately. Cool. And okay, so that's our molecular formula. The empirical formula is all about ratios. So I'm gonna write it as a ratio. I'm gonna write C, H, O. And so far we know that there's four, to eight to two, right? So what can we divide all of these numbers by? Help, you're stuck. Tell me what you're stuck with, MLG. What is an empirical formula? Well, that's kind of what we're gonna work through right now. So we will work through shows the ratio of atoms. Um, so yes, yeah, so what we do first is write down how many of each their atoms are, and then we divide it by the largest number it can divide by. And these beautiful people have told me we can divide everything by two, 
So we're going to. So instead of writing, there are four carbons, eight hydrogens, and two oxygens, we're going to write that there are four divided by two, which is two carbons, eight divided by two, which is four hydrogens, and two divided by two, which is one oxygen. So this is sort of like the minimum um, ratio you can write, which means that this is what we'll use for our empirical formula. So the empirical formula for butanoic acid is C2H4O. So right, this um, is going to be AQA, EdXL and OCR, Sophia. Tell me what you're lost, what are you, what are you lost about? So essentially MLG, um, all you're doing is looking at the molecular formula. So you, you count the amount of carbons. So there are four carbons in here, so C4. There are eight hydrogens, so H8, and there are two oxygens. So the, the, you got two um, from the fact that you can divide everything by two. So you can divide four by two, you can divide eight by two, you can divide two by two. Um, and essentially you're looking for, in maths, you would call it the highest common factor. So you're looking for the highest common factor, the thing that all of them can divide into, then you divide all of them by that thing and that will give you the empirical formula. Wicked, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna do this one, which is also um, a butane of some kind. Um, so this time, somebody, somebody help me out. What's the molecular formula? So how many carbons, how many hydrogens, how many oxygens? There are no oxygens. <laughs> so yes, how many carbons, how many hydrogens? Thank you, people. Yeah, we've got a C4H10. So that's our molecular formula. So what number goes into both four and 10? What's the highest number that goes? Yep, yeah, and Aisha, you're right. It, we can call this uh, two methylpropane. It does have like other names because there's ways to name butanes without sort of calling them propane, but yes. Um, C4HN, yeah, we divide by two. So two is the largest thing we can divide by. So the empirical formula will be C2H5. And that can't get any smaller because nothing goes into both two and five. I don't know why you're saying nine, MLG. Where, what, where's, what's your nine coming from? What is M? Um, um, where's the nine coming from people? Anybody? Multiply by nine. Why would we, why would we multiply by nine? Then divide by three. Nope, that's right. Why are we, why are we multiplying by nine and dividing by three? What is this? All right, I'm gonna leave that for now. As long as everybody's cool with the fact that you find the highest common factor and then you divide all of the numbers by that. Um, the answer is C2H5, AFT. So essentially we found that the highest common factor in four and 10 is two. So we divide everything by two and that gives us C2H5. If you change the number of atoms, aren't you changing the formula? Yes, Sunday. So, Empirical formulas do not tell you what it is. It doesn't tell you that this is going to be a butane of some kind. It doesn't tell you this is butanoic acid. All it tells you is what the ratio between the um, different elements are. So it, I've never really understood the um, purpose of <laughs> teaching empirical formulas because they aren't used that much, um, but you have to know them. So, um, all this time you thought I was spelling out FAT. Yeah, it's just it's just trying to figure out what the ratio is. Um, it's kind of useful for uh, math spec, I suppose. But it, yes, so empirical formulas, just the, the ratio between atoms. It's nothing to do with sort of like identifying the specific molecules. Cool, we're gonna move on. So we're gonna figure out um, how to find the empirical formula by experiment. And has the thing frozen possibly? I'm gonna keep going anyway. Um, but if it's frozen, do tell me. So 
we're going to use our knowledge of molar mass, which means that we need our triangle thing again. So I'm going to draw you guys a little, little triangle here. No, it's working. Thank you for letting me know. AFT, FAT. Have I been saying FAT? <laughs> uh, I hope, I hope not, Fatima. If I have, if I have been saying that, um, then I apologize. So actually, this is the last time I'm going to tell you what the triangle is. Next time you're going to tell me what the triangle is because I want you guys to learn it yourself because you're not going to be given it in the exam. But we've got little m mass, big m molar mass, n number of moles. Um, cool. So in an experiment, 2.025 grams of magnesium reacts with 13.3 grams of bromine. Work out the empirical formula. So you lovely people are going to... Um, find me the um, go look at your periodic table because you need to be familiar with it anyway otherwise you're going to be really slow in your exam trying to find things so find me magnesium find me bromine what is the molar mass Kaylee it is that and I'm wondering if you sort of know that already from uh, your knowledge of group two metals but we're gonna yeah 23 24.3, not milligrams, just grams, cricket ray. Make sure you've got your units right. You will lose marks. So your molar mass of magnesium is 24.3 grams. And bromine, thank you, Georgia, um, is BR is 79.9 grams. Cool. Right. So MG is for magnesium. Ah, okay. All right, cricket ray. That is That works, but you must put a uh, capital M. Uh, for magnesium. Otherwise, yes, you're right. Yeah, cool. So we've already got Kaylee doing some wonderful workings out. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this. We're looking for the number of moles, right? So we have mass, which are these things. We now have molar mass, which are these things. So we're looking for that, which means we're doing mass divided by molar mass. Um, so we're going to do, as Kaylee has said, 0. 2.0 my brain is not doing numbers 2.025 divided by 24.3 which is uh hello it's captain which is 0 0.083 and then for bromine we're gonna do we've got 13.3 grams 13.3 divided by 79.9 which gives us 0 0.166 so that means that we have a ratio of, stop it, of magnesium to bromine of 0 0.083 to 0 0.166. Um, so how, guys, remind me again, how do we, when we have a ratio, how do we make these whole numbers? What do we want to do? And Fluffy Pikachu's has already said, divide both by 0 0.083 and get a ratio of magnesium Bromine, 1.2. Yes, so we're dividing by the smallest number and Fluffy Pikachu's has it. So the smallest number is 0 0.83, 0 0.083. So the ratio is one to two, which means our empirical formula is MgBr2. And that happens to actually be the likely molecular formula as well. And you'll learn later on in the year because um, that's how magnesium and bromine tend to come together. But yes, well done, everyone. Um, so that's our empirical formula by experiments. So now we're going to look at molecular formula by experiments. So if we have experimental data, how do we work out the molecular formula as opposed to just the ratio? So again, we're going to be using our triangle, but you guys are going to tell me what's in the triangle. So what goes on the top of our triangle? Thank you, Ard. Yeah, mass, little m. And what goes on the bottom? What's times together? Got to go for dinner. Ah, James, I wish, I wish that were me. I'm getting like super hungry. I should have brought biscuits. Next time I'm going to have biscuits. Um, yeah, moles is big M. And then we've got, so we've got moles and molecular formula. Yeah, cool. But it's moles and it's not technically molecular formula. It's molar mass, Georgia. Um, yeah, wicked. 
Okay, so again, I'm gonna just, because you guys should really try to remember your carbon, oxygen and hydrogen because you use them so much. Um, so it's really worth just having them in your head. You might even have them in your head already, to be honest, because they do come up so much. Cool, so carbon is 12 grams, oxygen is 16, hydrogen is 11. So we have some percentages, percentage composition, and we have a molecular mass. So that's gonna help us figure out the molecular mass, the molecular formula, rather than the empirical formula. Um, so yes, so what we're gonna do is just remember that a percentage is over 100. It's really funny I should say that because I believe it was Cricket Ray's um, homework question before that I totally forgot they were over 100. Um, yes, so to work out carbon, that says 600, not 60. We're going to do 60 over 100, and we're gonna times it by something. What are we gonna times that by? Why am I doing 60 over 100? What am I trying to work out? Divide the percentage with the with MR. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what we're really trying to do here is figure out sort of what percent, what, um, how many grams of the molecular mass is carbon going to be? So we're doing 60 over 100 times 60, which gives us 36. So that's for our carbon. So I'm just going to put a big C here. And then for our hydrogen, we know we have 13.3 recurring over 100 times 60 again which gives us eight grams. And then we've got oxygen, which, what did I say? 26.6 recurring over hundred times 60. And if you don't know how to use the recurring button on your calculator, I suggest you find out because you might need it. Um, and what does that give us? That gives us 16. Cool. So right now, all we have is mass. These are masses, not molar masses. So if we want um, number of moles, what do we do? What do we need to divide these things by or times these things by? Or what are we, what are we doing with them? Times by 12. We don't want to times by 12. Timesing, so right now these are masses. So the mass is on the top, right? Yeah. We want to divide by the molar mass to get our number of moles. So we're looking for number of moles. So it's mass divided by molar mass. So we're dividing by 12 for carbon, as I've said here. We're dividing by one for hydrogen. We're dividing by 16 for oxygen. Um, and I'm pretty sure you guys can do this in your head. Practicing your mental math is a super good idea if you can't, but that gives us three, eight, and one. So, and that's it. That's H C three H eight O. I don't know. It's caption. What did one math book say to the other math book? Uh, it's, it's been deleted. We've, we've got no math jokes. Cool. Does everybody understand how we got there? Because I believe the next question is how are you feeling? So is everybody cool with that? Did that all make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's Captain, I like the math joke. I think possibly uh, it's not that relevant, um, but yes. Yay, okay, people are getting it. Oh, okay, Zena, what's if, so again, if you're confused with something, you have to tell me what has been confusing you um, because otherwise I cannot help. Help me with one question. That depends what the one question is. Um, um, I'm glad they help Casey. So just remember if it's confusing and there's something you have to tell me what is confusing or I can't help. And given it like five seconds before I move on to the exam questions. So the exam questions often make things less confusing to be fair because you practice again. Next session for year 13 is Thursday for year 12 is um, next Tuesday. Is there a schedule? Yeah, if you go on our YouTube channel, you can see when all the web classes are. I will show you that at the end, actually. Um, I'm gonna move on because nobody's telling me what's confusing. Okay, all good so far, wicked. All right, so sodium burns in oxygen to give a pale solid X. 
1.38 grams of sodium reacts with 1.2 grams of oxygen, calculate the empirical formula. So what are, we, what are we doing first, people? What do we need to know? We've been given a mass. Um, um, I can't um, help you with questions that aren't related to the current uh, lesson. You, I, you can ask that when I do enthalpy, when an enthalpy lesson, but that might be too late for you. Um, find the moles. Yes, we want to find the moles. Cool. So I'm going to draw us our triangle. Do you know, I'm not going to draw us our triangle. We're going to do it without the triangle. Remove the crutch. Okay, so tell me, somebody says find moles. What piece of information do we need that is not on the page? Mass divided by MR. Yep, 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 yep. So we want the molar mass. So the molar mass of sodium is 23. So that's from periodic table and the molar mass of oxygen, as I've said, you should probably remember this one is 16. So lovely Kaylee and lovely Trinette has have said mass divided by molar mass, which is true. So we're going to do 1.73 divided by 23, which gives us something. It gives us 0 0.075 and we're going to do 1.2 divided by 16, which gives us 0 0.075. And this question is super nice because um, essentially we don't have to work out ratios because it's obviously a one to one ratio, right? They're the same same number. So the empirical formula of X is NaO. Yes, Cricket Ray, you're totally right. One to one ratio. Kaylee, you're totally right. It is NaO and it's one to one. Perfect. Okay. So the next question is the molar mass of X. So X is the same X that's in the beginning of the question is 78 grams uh, per mole. Give the molecular formula of X. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to figure out what, what kind of um, combination of NaO would give us 78 grams, right? So first we need to figure out what, what is the um, molar mass of NaO first? Anyone? How are we going to work that out? We're not going to think about charge for the purposes of this uh, question, Adam. But yes, we we would think about charge at some point, but it wouldn't be um, a two minus charge. Yeah, we're going to do twenty three plus sixteen, which is thirty nine, um, and we've got a total molar molar mass of seventy eight grams. So what are we going to do with our seventy eight and our thirty nine? Anybody? Wicked, yeah. Thank you, Emain. Thank you, Kaylee. We're not going to multiply cricket rays. So essentially, we've got, we know our molar mass is 78 grams, and we know that the, the mass of the empirical is 39. So we're going to divide them. Um, and then by that, we'll get two. Why are we adding 23 and 16? Because we're trying to work out the molar mass of NaO and the mass, the molar mass of sodium is 23 and the molar mass of oxygen is 16. So 23 plus 16 is 39. Um, so we divide them and we get two, which means that we have two lots of NaO in the molecular formula, which means we've got two lots of sodium and we've got two lots of oxygen. So it's uh, Na2O2. Yay, Cricket Ray, glad. Why divide it? Because we're trying to figure out how many NaOs can get in the molar mass of X. So how many of the molar mass of NaO gets into 78? And we know that the molar mass of NaO is 39 because we added those together and we got 39. So we've got 78 divided by 39. Wicked, okay, moving on. Ooh, this one's, this one is a big one, okay, so. Sulfamic acid is a white solid used by plumbers as lime scale remover. Sulfamic acid contains, contains 14.42. What are the I'll come back to you, Sophia. 14.42 by mass of nitrogen, 3.09 hydrogen, and 33.06% of sulfur. The remainder is oxygen. 
um, find the empirical formula of sulfamic acid. This is the last slide, I think, Aisha. Oh no, we've still got balancing equations, Jesus. Actually, okay. So I'm gonna like fast forward because we've got, we've done a lot of these questions already and um, we've already been going an hour. So I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna skip ahead to balancing equations uh, just so we don't run over. Um, so quickly, quickly, key, key vocabulary. What does the AQ mean? What does that little subscript mean? Aqueous, yeah, thank you. No, I can't, Casey, I can't do random questions um, that aren't already in here, I'm afraid. So aqueous, but I will try to work that into a, a, another one at some point. So we've got aqueous, um, what does the L mean? Yes, what, it's uh, liquid, perfect. Uh, and G, what does G mean? Gas, yeah, thank you. And the S, solid, yeah, thank you, Anna, thank you, Ward. Cool, all right, so we've already talked about anhydrous, uh, but somebody remind me, what does anhydrous mean? No water, yeah, no water. So we're gonna sort of, whoopsie, say it fancily in the absence of water. And that means that hydrated means what? No water, yeah. I mean, not no water, with water. <laughs> yes, thank you, Cricket Ray. Yeah, aqueous or with water, either is fine. So with water. Cool, so that's housekeeping. So you guys should know how balancing equations work because you did do it at GCSE. You definitely did some at GCSE. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, I like to break it down like this. I like to sort of count the number of moles for the reactants and count the number of moles for products and then sort of like balance them stepwise. Um, yes, it's the big numbers in front, well done Bilal. So I'm gonna fill this in. I'm gonna, so we're looking at the reactants so far we've got two hydrogens in the reactant, and we've got two hydrogens in the products. So that's nice and balanced. Um, in our oxygen, we've got two oxygens in the reactants, but we've only got one in the products. And I just want to remind you guys that in balancing equations, you cannot alter the subscript number, the little number, you can only alter the number in the front. So right now we need to change um, the number in front of something so that we can balance our numbers of oxygen because we currently don't have that balanced. So what we need to do, I think first is double this up, which means that now we have to look and change our oxygen and we need to change our hydrogen in the products. But it also means that we now have two more hydrogens in the products than we have in the uh, reactants. So can someone tell me what we need to, what do I need to shove in front of the hydrogen in the reactants? Yeah, so George has already got it. Yeah, you need to put two in the front. So this is about as simple as it's gonna be. And this, you should have been able to do at GCSE. Um, so what we're going to do now is look at some slightly more complicated ones. And I'm gonna like speed up. Um, no, I didn't do enthalpy change and I won't be doing enthalpy change in this video. This is not an enthalpy uh, class. So we're gonna look at some of the trickier ones um, and they contain brackets. So the brackets you may or may not have come across at GCSE. Brackets essentially means that instead of writing O3H3, we just write OH in brackets and then a three. So whatever's inside the brackets, you times by whatever's outside the brackets. Um, which becomes important. So I'm gonna go ahead and count all of my numbers of reactants. So if, while I count the number of reactants, somebody could shove in the bottom how many of each element we have in the products in the comments, that would be wicked. So how many of the products do we have? So in the reactants, I can see we've got one uh, iron, we've got three chlorines, we've got one 
sodium, we've got one oxygen, and we've got one hydrogen. How many of each do we have in the products? So we've got, yeah, we've got one iron. Yeah, and for chlorine, we've got, so we've got, we've got one chlorine. We've not got one, um, Fluffy Pikachu says three, but there's one, there's one chlorine. And then we've got also one sodium, but in this case, we've got three oxygens and we've got three hydrogens. Yeah, so one, 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 three, three. Perfect. Okay. So what we need to do is we need more chlorine and we need more oxygens, right? So I'm gonna do the, the first thing I'm gonna do is shove a three in front of here so that we can have more chlorines. So now we've got three chlorines and we've got to times the products by three here. So that means we've got three sodiums. Uh, now we've got, why does the OH go into brackets? That's just how you write it. Um, so anything inside the brackets, you wanna times by the number outside. It's not how many bond, it's just sort of um, OH is, come, they come as a group. So you have OH group. So you want, so instead of just sort of like writing them out, this gives you more information. It tells you that there's an iron surrounded by three hydroxyl groups, which is what you call OH. So it's not that important until the later on in the year. Um, yes, so Mariam says it as well. OH is an ion that stays together. Cool. Right, so where are we? So I now have too many sodiums in the products compared to the reactants. So I'm gonna shove a three in front of the sodium as well. And that changes the number of sodium ions in the reactants um, to that. And we also need to change the oxygen to three and the hydrogen to three. And that has like balanced our equation nicely. So what I'm gonna do for the next one is I want you guys to just have a go. Just have a go at balancing it because it's gonna be quite difficult for me to just keep asking you how many reactants, how many products we have. So have a go at it. I'm gonna give you like 90 seconds, so like a minute and a half to have a go at the um, sodium phosphate calcium chloride one and then I will go through it. So have a go. So I'm going to give you 90 seconds and I'm going to have a lovely tea break while you guys have a go at doing this question. So I'm not going to tell you if you're right in the comments for the duration of my tea break um, so that other people have a chance to um, figure it out themselves. Hello, Achan. If you've just popped in, I'm waiting for people to come up with the answer for the last, the last bit. We're getting some answers in, so I'm gonna wait for a couple more and then I'm gonna go through it. We've got some good answers. Got some good answers in here. We've got some slightly dodgy answers in here. Yeah, Diana, the best way to do these is just to practice them loads, which is probably why your teacher's giving you them for your homework. But yes, they do get a bit long. All right, so tea break over, Sad, sadly for me. Um, so what I'm gonna do is start. So the first thing I'm gonna do is count on the reactants. So we've got three sodiums, we've got one phosphorus, we've got four oxygens, we've got one calcium, we've got two chlorines. And in the products, we have one sodium, we have two phosphorus, because remember the brackets on the outside, you have to times it. We've got eight oxygens, we've got four inside the brackets and two outside, so we have eight oxygens. We've got three calciums and we've got, do we have three? Yes, we do. And we've got one chlorine. So the first thing I want to do is I wanna times my sodium. I'm gonna try and change my sodium a bit. So I'm gonna times that by three. And so that I have three sodiums here and so that I have three chlorines. 
And that kind of messes me up a bit because now I have like a two chlorines in the um, reactants and I have three in the products. And when you see the two and the three, what you want to do is sort of like times the one that has a three by two, so double it, and times the one that has a two by three. And that should, because often people get really confused about what to do in that situation. So what I'm going to do instead, instead of having this three in front of the sodium is I'm going to double up and make it six. So in the products, I should have six sodiums and I should have six chlorines. And then I'm going to times the um, calcium chloride by three so that I have six chlorines and three calciums. So now I'm almost balanced. All I need to do is figure out how to get um, my oxygens um, nice and balanced. And that's starting to look pretty obvious because I need to double up. So I'm gonna shove a two in here, um, which means that I now have six sodiums, two phosphorus and eight oxygens. And that nicely balances my equation. Well done for everybody who got it right. You're totally correct. Um, do I have more questions? What do you mean by do I, do I have more questions that I'm going to ask you or do I have more questions or does somebody else have more questions? Um, I'm going to move on because people seem to be doing okay. How do people feel about balancing equations? Good. Happy. We have some happy Pikachus, some happy, happy Bilal, happy Georgia, happy Faye. Excellent trouser press guy. I really kind of want to know why you're called trouser press guy. Do you just have like really impeccably ironed trousers? Interesting. So everyone's looking happy. So that means we're gonna, do you know what I'm gonna do? Because we're running over time and I'm trying really hard not to run um, way over. I'm gonna skip the exam questions. I'm gonna do the thing at the end where I tell you how to get your cheap, lovely things. Um, so that you can have discounted sat provides and then you guys can ask me questions if you have them and then you guys can you know chill out maybe go get some tea for yourself maybe have dinner so skipping the balanced equation questions from here um so we went over moles and molar mass we went through molecular and empirical formulae and we learned to balance um more complex equations your dad ha does have an interesting sense of humor trouser press guy using your dad's account okay so that makes more sense i was thinking i've never met a teenager that presses their own trousers but you know uh you see something new every day that's not the saying but it should be one okay so reminding you guys that we have our snap revised 2.0 launching on october the 16th um which is really cool because these web classes essentially are part of it and we also have this like really smart learning uh, system where essentially like we continually test your knowledge and give you content to teach you the things that you don't already know. Um, so you've got sort of like um, predicted exam packs. So we'll ask you exam questions based on what you don't know because uh, you'll be tested throughout. It's really, really cool. Um, and you'll also have web classes if you have the ultimate package and you'll have me. So like all of you guys that were answering questions um, asking me questions that weren't in this web class and you really wanted answers, you will be able to do that with the ultimate package. So you'll be able to like send me random questions. Like I'm so confused about this thing my teacher asked me to do and I don't know how to do it. Um, you can you can do that uh, with the ultimate package. So that's all being released on the 16th. Um, if you already have Snap Provise, it will be upgraded to the basic package, but it's gonna be cheaper for you. Um, so everybody said, so we like our loyal loyal people that have been there from the beginning so anybody that sort of like signs up before the 16th it will be cheaper for you than if you were to sign up after i can't tell you how much it's going to be i'm afraid um we don't know yet yes so speaking of web classes if you want to go to youtube and set reminders if you go to our um if you just search snap provise in youtube and go on our page and click on the live streams you can set reminders for all of the web classes that are coming up um so yes so do that <laughs> if you want to come next week and you're forgetful like me um here is your code here is you guys have stuck around and you've been fabulous so well done um i thank you so much um, Angela, I, I really appreciate that.
Um, yes, so here you go. If you sort of do this, you get access for two years to old SNAP provides, um, and then you'll be automatically upgraded to the basic package. I mean, obviously, Faye, I'm going to say get this instead of tailored shooters because I work um, for this. The person who won the Insta competition, my lovely colleague, will be um, telling that person who won, um, which is exciting. Happy Panda, I'm so happy that you're happy. And I, I love your name because I also love pandas. Does anyone have any questions about this class? Not like random questions about other things. You're welcome, Anita. I know it does, Faye. I mean, when we have the price, we'll, we'll release it. We just don't at the moment. I'm so glad, Diana. I'm glad, I'm glad everybody is happy. Fluffy Pikachu is no. Does that mean no, you don't have any questions? Or is that just like a general life no? I hope it's the, the questions kind. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, I'm gonna take this to mean that there aren't questions and I'm gonna go and I will see you on Thursday if you're year 13 and I will see you next Tuesday, hopefully, if you are year 12. Um, I will, so like, thank you.